Hi everybody, welcome to another one of my live videos. I hope you are all in the mood tonight to learn something about energy and auras and all that good stuff. Um, at first I wanted to do a little commercial. Um, the Ridgefield Playhouse, I am so happy to announce, only has 35 seats left in the orchestra, but the mezzanine is open. So I hope you will join me and everybody else for a night of um, fabulous music, um, talking about my book, doing a reading. It's going to be an absolutely wonderful night. I can guarantee you that. Also, I wanted to introduce the new Mother of Mary necklace. This necklace was inspired directly from my book. It is, um, it's beautiful, this leather, there's real pearls, there's, um, there's a medal of Mary that came from Medjugorje. Um, the medals differ on all the necklaces. You get kind of what, um, what I guess Mary wants you to have, but they're all of Mary, but they're from holy sites. So um, you can get that on my website at anaraymondi.com. And if you haven't already signed up for my newsletter, this would also be a good opportunity for you to do that. In order to get tickets for the Ridgefield Playhouse, please go to ridgefieldplayhouse.org and just type in my name and the calendar will come up um, and then you can just buy tickets. So um, I hope you will be there. Things are really getting rolling for me. I'm planning lots of events in restaurants for book signings and bookstores for book signings. And um, I'm doing a workshop on the 22nd on past lives. And I will hopefully be doing more and more of those kind of things. We're planning retreats. So things are really busy here, um, but it's all by the grace of God. And I am being led very much by the hand of Mary. So that being said, um, tonight I wanted to talk about energy. Um, so for, for those of you who know something about energy, you can um, bear with me and you may want to add in. Otherwise, um, if this is a new topic for you or what I'm saying is a new way of hearing it, it's all good and you need to be listening to this for some reason. So before I start, I just want to pray that your ears and hearts are open, your eyes are open, your thoughts are open to receive at the highest level, and that the vibration of this teaching will bring your vibration higher and higher. So, what is energy? So energy is something that cannot be created and cannot be destroyed, which is why the soul lives on, because we are made of energy. But that's not it. We are a walking and breathing energetic field. And from this field, we radiate energy in terms of feeling and in terms of color. So if, when you meet somebody, you may feel, hmm, I don't know, I'm feeling something weird about this person. It could be that their energy is off. It could be that, um, you know, they had a bad day, or it could be that they're a negative person and maybe doesn't work well with your energy at that moment or in general. You may not see the energy, although you can. That's the aura. So the energy, um, you know, begins within in your chakras. Those chakras are the energy systems, energy centers, I'm sorry, in your body. So if you've ever had an energy healing session such as Reiki, what the practitioner will do is to balance your energy centers and to bring more vibrancy into them. Because what happens is if we are off energetically, our energy centers shut down and they, the colors change. So for instance, um, the energy center, the first chakra is a red chakra. And if that chakra gets kind of shut down, it turns like a muddy red. And when the energy is brought into the chakra, it becomes a vibrant red. And just so you know, when a Reiki practitioner brings in the energy, he or she is not bringing in their own energy. The energy that is coming through is divine energy. And this energy also has divine innate intelligence. So the energy will go where it needs to go. So a Reiki practitioner can have his or her hands on your shoulders, and yet you need the energy in your second chakra, which is in your torso. 
Um, so just, just know that. Um, you can feel the energy shifts in your body. You can also balance your own energy by meditating, by bringing in the energy of the divine, by bringing in all that is good and all that is right in the universe into your body. You just pull it into your body and you sit with it. When you meditate, you're of clear mind. So you're not thinking. Um, and in this clear mind state, you're able to receive. Just remember whenever you meditate to protect yourself with that um, soft cocoon of light and protection in the angels so that you are receiving, again, all that is good and all that is right in the universe into your own body to bring up your energy. Um, we do know when our energy is depleted because sometimes we feel very tired, unmotivated, maybe a little depressed. When our energy is going strong, we feel ready to go. We're gonna go, go, go. We feel ready to live in our light. Um, we're more compassionate um, toward other people and our own vibration will rise, okay? So the energy center, the vibration, everything goes hand in hand. Our mental capacity to bring in the light, all hand in hand. Again, nothing operates on its own, which is why I pray someday that the medical community will totally embrace alternative medicine so that we can truly, we can truly move into the healing that is set forth in front of us. But it's the same way with us, you know, individuals bringing in the great energy into us, okay? Just bring it in. Um, there are those who see energy and that's called auras. So the energy radiates from your body and out. So um, some people say it goes out 12 feet, some people say it goes out six feet. Um, it goes out incrementally, um, depending on what your energy is all about. So somebody with a really big energy may go out further, um, but somebody who is also very negative can go out very, very far. And kind of that energy kind of pulls other people in, whether it's positive or negative. So when you feel you're being pulled in by that, that energy, decide whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. If you feel it is a negative energy, then you probably should walk away. Um, I have gone into parties when I have felt that the energy of certain people wasn't good for me and left. Um, because I don't want to be affected, especially when I'm in a really good place. But the energies have color. So um, Mary's energy is kind of multicolored, but predominantly um, blue. So when I did the cover of my book, and yes, this is it. Um, it's not it's not out yet, but I did get the first copy. So when I did the when I did the cover of the book and changed the cover of the book because I wanted her energy there. It's not important um, to Mary that people can conjure up an image of her. It might be important to you, but it's not important to her. Um, but um, the image of, of the book is important. And so you can see the purple and the pink and the green. These are high vibrational colors, okay? Um, and you know, and I know you're seeing this in reverse, unfortunately, and I don't know how to fix that. Um, but it says conversations uh, with Mary. Um, so, and this is my name down here in reverse, kind of looks like Arabic when it's kind of reversed like that. Um, but whatever it is, um, that's why the colors of this book um, were brought forward. So not only um, when I talk about Mary, you know, in terms of maybe the woman that I see, but it's also in terms of her energy. I feel her energy more than I see her. I hear her, I feel her, and that's what energy does. So energy is also a feeling. Um, it's in our bodies, we feel energy. So many of you may know that there are energy vampires out there. So these are people that mostly unknowingly, most of them are not consciously trying to steal energy from people whose energy is high. It's just something that happens because their energy is so low and they crave it. So, you know, of course, I can't go over to someone and just grab their energy, um, but I can steal it um, by certain things that I may do. I can deplete them. I could attach to them and pull the energy out. We all have to be very careful of the energy vampires. Um, these are not necessarily bad people. They're just people um, looking for, um, they're looking to, to feel better to be better, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, and they want 
you know, what other people of a higher energy have. Um, again, as we raise our energy, we raise our vibration. And, you know, as, as energy vibrates, okay? And so as our energy increases, it vibrates. And it vibrates to a level where it wants to reach the level of the highest vibration, which is divine energy. Um, and so that, that's what happens. When you meet someone of a high vibration, a high, vi a high energy, or um, somebody that you're comfortable with, I'm sorry, I have, I, my nose is bothering to me tonight. Um, so I'm sorry about that. But in any case, um, when we meet someone like that, we're very attracted to these people, okay? Because we feel that in some way, they can get us to that, to that place. That doesn't necessarily mean we're stealing their energy. That may mean that we just want to spend time with them. We might want to learn from them, you know, learn how they live their lives, you know, learn what they do, talk to them. You know, these, these people can help us. Keep in mind, we're all, we've all been put on this planet to love and heal each other. And so it's okay to be attracted to people like that so that your own energy can raise very important you know certain people can see auras um, and if you want to practice seeing auras um, you can do that a funny story that I, I have an interesting funny story is that I was teaching a class on how to see auras years ago and um, I had mentioned to my mother that I was teaching this class and I'm on the phone with her and she says what do you mean do you mean the the, the colors around people and I said yeah and she said Oh, I've always thought, I've always seen them. You know, some people don't realize what they're seeing. They don't realize that these colors are the energy of the person. It's what the person is all about. Our energy is, is who we are. It's a piece of our soul deep down. This skin, this hair, you know, all of this is just a covering for the most important part of us, which is our soul. And the energy does radiate from there as well. But if you do want to see auras, you can stare at a blank wall and then unfocus and look at a plant or a person with your eyes kind of unfocused and you probably will see something. It may look, and it takes some practice, um, it may look like a negative or just a line around people. Understand, energy is not only in people, it's in animals, it's in plants, it's in living things. So you can practice doing that. You know, again, just stare at a wall. Um, stare and then kind of unfocus your eyes and turn to something living and see if you can see anything. Um, you may be able to feel something as well. You know, um, people have practiced on me and it's interesting because many people see the same colors um, around me, the same vibrant colors. So we all have um, a major aura color that kind of um, defines us and that can change. Okay, but we also have the, the colors coming out of our chakras as well. So um, I hope that I um, explained it, but I will entertain whatever questions you have. So let's see. Let's see, let's go to the top. I think that's the top up here. Uh, let's see, let's go, oh, okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Hi, everybody who's saying hello to me. I And I'm not always selling, okay? I'm sharing, and there's a difference. I'm not making any money on the Reachville Playhouse. I'm giving away a book, and I'm going to be there. And I don't, I'm not making any money. It's not about selling. It's about bringing something into people's lives that's pure and good, okay? What I do is pure and good, and it helps people, and it helps people it helps people heal, okay? So I bring that up. Um, you know, when it comes to this necklace, this necklace is a symbol of, of her being with us, Mary being with us, okay? Not enough people have symbols in their life. It's a symbol. So it's not about selling. It's not about making money. It's about bringing something into people's lives that they can hold on to and heal from. Okay, so Anne wants to know what I think of my book. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, you know, it's not my book. It's Mary's book. Truly, it is. Um, I couldn't have written this book. She wrote this book. So I think it's absolutely beautiful. 
Um, and you know, you won't be able to get the book until October 17th when it's published. I just, I just got my first copy, which was very exciting. I waited for the Federal Express man yesterday, all day long, like a child waiting for Christmas. Okay, let's see. It's still going. Uh, a lot of people saying hello. I miss you all too, those who haven't joined me. I'm so glad you're on this page. Thank you, Carrie, for also explaining a part of that question. So, Anne, you can look at Carrie's answer as well. Let's keep going here. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad you like the information, Maura. Yeah, um, yeah, Carrie. Um, you know, you you can balance yourself and balance your energy a lot of different ways. Reiki is one of them. Um, as long as you're with somebody who is spiritual and understands and says it's not about them bringing their energy forward. It's about bringing divine energy forward that will move in your body. You can also take your own hands and put it on those areas where you feel stress. So if you feel stress, you know, over here or in your stomach or even in your back, you know, um, put your hands there as well. We all have the ability to heal, to heal ourselves and to heal each other. And again, this energy comes from our soul. So, you know, use it on your own body, you know, use it on your grandchildren, you know, your boyfriend, your husbands, you know, whatever it is, your children, um, to help them. It will bring you down to a place where you feel calm. So if you have a lot of anxiety, um, I would certainly recommend that, that you do that. If you feel yourself like way out of balance, a Reiki session would probably be beneficial. Um, you know, you just need to find somebody really good. And please, I don't do Reiki anymore. Um, you know, I can recommend people in Connecticut, but I'm not doing it anymore. So, um, unfortunately, I, I can't help you with that because it's hands-on. Reiki cannot be done remotely. Your body, um, they need the light touch on your body, not a heavy touch, a light touch. Sometimes it feels heavy because of the energy, but it's a light touch. Um, you know, there's other ways to balance your energy. A walk in nature, okay? Breathing, you know, by a beach. You know, breathing in um, the creations around us, you know, the, these things that are put before us that they're not only just to look pretty, they're, they're there to help us balance ourselves, okay? And that, that's important. So, you know, take a long walk on a beach, go up to a mountain, you know, and, and sit there. Also balancing your energy, um, it's also good to read things that are worth reading, you know, instead of the, you know, the, what I call the killing books. You know, or, or you know, watching the, the shows on television that aren't great for us. They tend to make us anxious, and they tend to instill fear. Okay, and fear is a really, really bad thing to um, attach ourselves to, because it really is the opposite of love. You know, God is the being of all love, and so when we fear, we say we don't believe. We don't believe that this God can help us and can get us through. So, um, you know, those things will also help you. There's no immediate quick fix, okay? And understand, Reiki doesn't cure. Reiki heals, okay? Um, God cures, okay? So if you go to a Reiki practitioner and you want to be cured of something, um, the Reiki practitioner, can, all, she, all she or he can say is that, you know, they conduct um, the energy through your body. And that energy... Um, is meant to heal you where you need healing the most, but it also, you know, it also will, um, will balance your chakras. Keep in mind, everything was made in balance, okay? Everything. There's a yin and there's a yang, um, and it works that way, you know, and it's perfect. It really is perfect. This world was created in perfection, and then, you know, we kind of screwed it up, um, but it is perfect. Always bring yourself back into the balance, okay? That's really important. The more balanced you are, the more balanced your energy will be. Okay. Okay, Claire asks, curious if a criminal or a bad guy's color is black? Um, yeah, for the most part, black, muddy brown. Um, you know, if anyone who tries to hurt anybody 
um, intentionally, oh yeah, oh, their energy is going to be muddy. There's no, there's nothing bright about that. You know, the brightness is um, the brightness that comes from us. You know, when, when we're balanced, okay, is this is this goodness of the soul also? Well, somebody who's a criminal, someone who's hurting other people, is not in balance, okay? You cannot be in balance with the soul if you're trying and actually hurting other people. So yeah, it really is black. Like when you see that, like um, I think in that movie um, with Demi Moore and Whoopi Goldberg, and I can't think of the name of it, you know, she was making pottery. Um, there was a bad guy in that movie, I don't know, I can't remember the name of the movie, but I'm sure you all know it. Um, they, um, there was a bad guy in the movie, and they actually show it in the movie, of this like blackness, and then like going down, you know, into the earth, in the blackness. Um, the part about that's true is the blackness. You know, he was trying to hurt them. I, I, he might have been trying to kill them. I don't remember. Um, but he was doing, he was a really bad guy. So, um, yeah, that's true. You know, that that's true. Keep in mind, we're all inspired. Um, and artists are inspired to paint certain things. Um, people are inspired to work on certain projects, write certain books, make certain movies. It's all inspiration. Um, and when that inspiration comes through, there's a lot of truth to what happens in that stuff and what you're seeing. You just need to, um, you know, go deep and discern what's true and what's not true. But I can tell you when it comes to that with the bad guy, definitely black or a very muddy um, brown. Uh, certain colors, more positive energy. All the brilliant colors are positive energy. Um, all of them. Um, there are higher colors, high spiritual colors, blue purple, gold, um, those are the colors that will really like define the person as opposed to coming from the chakras maybe, um, but if someone has those colors around them, they are um, spiritually evolved. That doesn't mean, um, you know, someone who doesn't have those colors around them isn't spiritually evolved, um, but those People with those colors around them are absolutely spiritually evolved. Also interesting, um, in many of the paintings of saints or people like that, there are halos around their head. Um, what the artist was painting was energy. The artist was painting the aura, okay? And so, sometimes um, the halos, are, there's sparks of gold coming out of it, you know? So the artist was inspired you know, from the divine to paint it in that way. Because we all have that around us. So not just, you know, the holy people, the prophets, the saints, the whomever. We all have um, that halo around us. Um, sometimes it's not as bright um, as it could be. So, you know, it, it's up to you to decide what you're going to do about that and to raise your vibration and live in a way where your energy is being put into good things and you feel balanced. There are times when all of us are out of balance, okay? Um, you know, we, we're not perfect. You know, sometimes we walk around and um, we get angry at things that maybe um, we shouldn't get angry at and you know and you know so that kind of brings us down a little bit or not nice to people that we should be nice to and that brings us down a bit or not understanding or judgmental you know judgment is probably one of the worst things you know people look at other people and, and in that judgment is insecurity um, and because when somebody feels better than somebody else there is an insecurity Okay, it's not as clear as, as it sounds, you know, um, you know, it's okay to question things, but it's not okay to judge, you know, until you walk in somebody else's shoes or you truly understand the mission behind something, um, there should be no judgment because sitting down with people who, um, you know, you may look at and say, you know, I don't like how they practice their spirituality or what they believe in. Well, who's to say? Who's to say that it's not as wonderful as your spirituality? Who's to say it's not raising their energy up as high as you want to raise your energy up? Who's to say they're not good people? They're just living their lives um, a little bit different to you, but probably parallel. So don't judge, okay? Um, and you know, and you know, don't judge because you will be judged. And you know, being judged is yeah, it's not so great. You know, it's, it's kind of horrible having to live on the defense, okay? Don't live on the defense, you know, and don't live on the offense. You know, it's not a game. You know, live the way is best for you 
to feel happiness and joy and love in your life and to attract people like that. When your energy is really low, um, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you're searching for people to get it better, but sometimes, you know, you attract negative people as well that bring it, that bring it even lower. And when you're out of balance, it's like being in Mercury and retrograde forever, which I don't know about you, but I really don't like that. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of, um, to look at it from, from all sides and how you can get it up to the place it needs to be and feel good about yourself. Um, the brighter your energy, the more balanced you are, the better you feel. And you feel better, mind, body, spirit, okay, because it affects everything. Also, um, when we have an issue, um, most of our issues um, come from emotions. So we have an issue um, and emotionally we're, we're not feeling good or it's unstable or say lack of forgiveness. It starts out here, way out here. And then as it's not healed, as we don't address it, it gets closer and closer and closer and may turn into intense anxiety. Intense anxiety it may turn into an illness. You know, um, understand it's not as simple and as esoteric as just, you know, clearing out our energy and feeling balanced. There's more to it. It affects us in every which way. We are multi-dimensional people. We're complicated. We are complicated machines. And we don't just exist in our mind and in our body. We exist out here as well. And we bring things in. So um, be conscious of the way you're feeling and where it may be coming from. You know, there are many books that talk about like, people who have heart disease. Um, you know, yes, you can be predisposed to it, of course, um, but you also can be predisposed to it or not predisposed to it and have a broken heart or suffer with betrayal um, that you haven't cleared out. So it's somewhere over here and gets closer and closer and closer. Um, and if there are books written about the other diseases in the body that um, are affected by this, I believe Carolyn Miss, M-Y-S-S, um, wrote a book about this. I don't remember the book, unfortunately. Um, it may be Heal Yourself or something like that. It's an older book where she talks about that. So um, if you're interested in that, I'm sure there's other books out there that you can read. It's really interesting because when I read things like that and I think about my relatives and the problems they had, it totally makes sense based upon um, their personalities or what they held in their energy field, in their emotions. You know, everything goes hand in hand. Um, okay, so I'm being asked about other books on energy or auras. Um, I don't know what's new and out there on energy and auras, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, there was a book, I believe, called um, Wheel of Light or something like that, that you might want to pick up, um, go on Amazon and like, you know, type in, you know, energy, type in auras. You're going to come up with a ton of books, okay? There's not one I really can recommend because, I, you know, I mean, I've read them a long time ago, um, but it's so second nature to me now that I don't really refer to them. You know, for you who, of those who are my clients, once a year I take all my books and um, I put them on my, not all my books, but the books that I want to share and I kind of put them on my floor and, um, you know, they're free for the taking. So um, I don't know when I'm doing that again because I, honestly I don't have time to clean up my books right now. Um, but when I do that, um, you know, if that's a good opportunity to also get books um, if you have an appointment with me or just want to stop by and get them. So I can let you know about that. But again, I have no idea when I'm doing that. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. So um, I would love to give you all the information about, you know, all these other things, but I just don't know. Okay. Let's see. Oh, you're welcome, Tricia. Um, where can you find my book? Um, my book can be purchased um, at Amazon, at Barnes & Nobles. Um, I think most of the Barnes & Nobles in um, the city, um, in Connecticut, um, I think Long Island, I don't know where, but they're carrying the book, so they should be in the stores as well. So, um, you know, you can go to Simon & Schuster's website if you want to order it there. Most people would rather go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon um, or get it in a store, you know. I'm also doing book signings. Um, I'm doing, um, and these are free, I'm doing a book signing in Rockville Center at um, 
the Corkscrew. I'm doing a book signing at RJ Julia. I'm doing a book signing at two other places in Connecticut. That is Bank Street, um, which is in Upper Connecticut. Um, so I'm doing book, and I'm doing um, I'm doing um, book signing luncheons where there's a lunch, and you know I'm there, and I'm going to be talking about the book, talking about my process, talking about how she comes to me and my story, and talking about the messages that she wants us to hear. Truly, I wrote this book because she told me to write this book because she wanted the messages out. That was the reason I didn't think I was writing a book, and the series of events that led to it are so clear that um, this wasn't something that I had planned. And I will talk about that at the book signings. And you can buy books there and I will sign them. I'll be there, obviously. Um, and you can do that. If the Richfield Playhouse, you're getting a book. You know, So anybody who gets a ticket, you're getting a book. Um, so you can get a book there as well. So just, just know that there's a lot of places you can get them. I would be very surprised if um, you couldn't get your hands on the book. I will also be speaking at the Spiritualist Church in November, and I will be doing um, a book signing and a workshop there as well. So some of the restaurants I'm going to are Elm Street in New Canaan, um, the Rayton Seafood House, Peaches in Norwalk, Bernard's in, um, in Ridgefield, um, that's just from the top of my head, um, Quattro Pazzi in Fairfield. Um, but you go, if you go to my website, um, we tend to post these um, pretty much daily, as, as I find out, they get posted. There's no description underneath them because, um, you know, because I, I'll put the descriptions in as we get closer to them. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so you can, you, can also, you can also go there and look to say, you should, my website has a ton of stuff. So if you go on my website, you'll see all that kind of stuff. Okay. Is there any way we can ra help raise the energy of our surroundings to be more positive? Absolutely. Um, bring in plants, okay? Plants um, naturally raise energy. Um, don't be always sitting in front of the television watching these horrific shows on TV. You know, people laugh when they, they're telling me about a show and I don't really watch television, okay? Um, because there's nothing on it that I feel really raises you know, my, my level of, um, my level of energy, my level of consciousness, you know, um, you know, every once in a while I'll watch something on, you know, PBS or yes, I do laugh at some of the comedies I'm on to kind of lighten myself and be entertained. But a lot of the stuff on there is really not good for us. You know, we don't need to see a murder on television and it's so realistic. You know, we don't need these horror shows. You know, we don't need shows that are mocking people. You know, there's a lot of shows that are mocking people. You know, we don't need to see that. We need the, sh the shows that bring light into our environment and our lives. Um, you know, in your kitchen, you know, um, cook organic foods. You know, you know, I try the best I can. I'm not perfect with it, but it's, it's better for not only the energy of your body, but the energy of your kitchen. You know, that, that goes hand in hand. Um, animals, animals balance energy. Animals are really good, no matter what kind of animal it is. You know, I am very partial to dogs because I'm a dog lover, but um, you know, birds, um, fish, you know, whatever you have, cats, guinea pigs, you know, they, they balance the energy in your home. When it comes to outside your house, vegetation. You know, whether it's flowers or it's food, um, whatever's out there, it's, you know, that you're planting and you're growing that comes from the earth, will also help you raise the energy around your house. Keep in mind, your house has energy as well because of the people living in the house and about the memories in the house because memories have energy and the other people that have lived in your house. And I hate the word haunting um, because most of them are there just because they so love the house and they probably love you, okay? So um, there are, you know, those are the ways that the easy ways to to raise the energy. Also, a home that doesn't have a lot of arguing um, or bickering or, um, you know, those kind of things or screaming, you know, those things tend to lower energy. You know, um, you know, houses that are peaceful and loving and calm where people care about each other and they're compassionate, where people aren't sitting around the table complaining, you know, about another member of the family. You know, it's one thing to talk and get things off your chest and it's another thing to dwell on it. 
You know, it's okay to talk about things. It's okay to talk about things that bother you, but to dwell on it and make it a focal point um, lowers energy. Okay. Do crystals help with raising energy? I always feel better when I do when I use my crystals. Absolutely. Um, the molecular structure of, of crystals is similar to the mo molecular structure in our body. And that's why um, we are attracted to them. They resonate with us. And so if you have crystals around, you know, they tend to balance energy. But remember, whenever you get a crystal, you need to clear it. So if you know Reiki, you can Reiki it and clear it. You can put it in distilled water and clear it. You can put it under the moon and clear it. You can put it under the sun and clear it. Um, but they do need to be cleared because a lot of people have touched them. Um, and if they, when they become yours, they're yours. You also shouldn't let a lot of people touch your crystals um, because then their energy gets on the crystals. And if, if it's just you um, or you know other people in your household who are using the crystals, then um, it should only be you. I tend not to touch my crystals. I clear them and I put them down and I let them just balance the energy in my home and in my office. You know, there are certain crystals that are used for certain things. Amethyst is used for people who are depressed, um, who need to raise that energy up. You know, there um, you can look at the properties of the crystals. You know, quartz is a great um, crystal to use when you're meditating to bring in the energy of intuition and divinity. Look them up, you know, pick the crystals that are right for you. The same thing with stones. You know, certain stones may not be stones that you would want to wear on your body because the stones also help you with your energy because they, they have properties. Um, they have energetic properties that help you um, balance your energy and bring in you know, um, all that is good. And there are certain stones that are very good with balancing energy. So, you know, look them up, you know, look up, you know, Google it, see what's out there or get a book. I mean, I have a crystal book in my office that I just look up the properties of them because it's just easier for me than, you know, I'm just better with books than, you know, looking things up. But, you know, if, if you're good looking things up, then you can look things up well, but absolutely crystals. Okay, um, Yvonne wants the name of the book. The name of the book is Conversations with Mary. Um, you must have seen lots of posted uh, postings of it on my pages, um, and there will be more, um, because it's important for me that this book winds up in the hands of everyone in the world. So you will see more and more and more of that. You can pre-order it at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, probably. Okay. Lisa says, every time I go to work, my energy gets negative. Well, that's a problem, especially if you need that job. Um, well, that would mean that there's you know, people there who are either sucking your energy out of you if you go there happy and then you, know, and then you feel negative, or, um, you know, or it's the people that are coming into where you work. I think you're a massage therapist, um, if, I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, so, you know, when you're working on people and their energy is negative, you have to protect yourself from absorbing that. You're, you know, and you're an empath, probably, because if you're absorbing it, that would make you an empath. You know, um, I see people every day, and, you know, I see sad people, I see people who are depressed, I see people that can't get out of their own way, and I'm very careful about my energy field. Um, I surround myself very carefully. Um, with the energy of God, okay? And I make sure that I can help them through this shield that I have around me, um, but I don't have to take it into my own body, because if I did, I would be a wreck. I really would be. There's people who are really hurting out there, you know, and they do want pieces of me, and I understand, and I wish that I could, you know, give them all that I have, but if I did that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I would die. So I can't do that. But I learned how to protect myself. And I suggest that any of you um, who are empaths, picking up energy in um, supermarkets, malls, where you kind of feel kind of icky or, um, or tired, you know, I, I suggest that um, 
you know, you either stay away from those crowded places if it's a part of your work and you can't, that you surround yourself with that energy, that divine energy that will protect you and the energy of your guardian angels and your spirit guides and, you know, all else. You know, I have been told um, by other mediums that um, I have an army around me because of what I do. I have an army of angels. I have an army of spirit guides. Um, which makes it difficult for them to read me because it's a barrier um, that that can they can't break through. It's a protection. I have to have that. You all don't have to have that, but keep in mind you do have you do have legions around you who are protecting you. You have to recognize it, okay? And you have to call on it when you need it. That's important. You know, um, you know. I always tell people, no matter what their religion is. To say the Our Father, because it really is a non-denominational prayer. It doesn't speak to Christianity. You know, um, Jesus was a Jewish man who was giving that people an example of how to pray. Okay, the prayer is very pure. You know, um, so when you say an Our Father, it's a very strong protection prayer. If you don't feel so compelled to say that, um, there is the prayer. Um, that of the Archangel Michael, that is also a very strong protection prayer. And um, and you can find those online if you just kind of Google it. Or, yeah, you can find that. Okay, I don't know who's saying ghost and what that means. So, everybody's saying ghost. I have no idea what that means. Um, uh, oh, thank you, Carrie. Carrie's reading my first book. I think that's still on Amazon. The other book was taken down, but I think that's still there. Um, okay, so Lisa is saying that um, when she isn't feeling good about herself, um, she, um, she asks her higher power to please remove any judgment or negative thoughts. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, talk to God. Talk to God. It's recognition that you don't want this. It's recognition um, that you're judging yourself or judging other people, you know, and you pull back from it and, and you say, wow, you know, I don't like this. So God, please remove it from me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's a wonderful thing to stop and do. But by the same token, Lisa, when you feel the negative energy where you work, you can say, God, I want to be protected from this. I don't want to feel this. I want to feel joy in my work. Okay, because you're helping other people. And so move into that space as well. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Yes, yeah, so our thoughts are crucial to our well-being um, because what we think we put out to the universe, our thoughts have energy. Okay, again, we're energetic beings. Our thoughts have energy. So when we put out a thought, um, we are affecting not only ourselves, um, we're also affecting the people around us and the intention of the thought. Um, so when you feel yourself being hard on yourself or negative, you know, there, there, there is, you know, there, there is the notion that we have to push ourselves forward. Okay, but you can do that without saying, boy, I really am horrible at this. You know, instead of saying that, you can say, you know what, there's things I'm good at and things I'm not so good at. And, you know, I excel at this, but not at this. So I'm going to work on working on, I'm going to work on getting this part of it better. Um, it's a different way than saying, boy, I suck. Because <laughs> that's what I think we, we say to ourselves. And we can't say that. But it's also saying about other people, you know. Um, and sometimes it's so unconscious, you know, so unconscious, you know, what we're thinking you know, about other people, and then, you know, we catch ourselves, and, you know, we have to kind of pull back and say, that's not fair. It's not fair to judge somebody in that way. It's not fair because we also send out that negative energy to them, and they feel it. So we are actually working to bring down their energy as well as ours. It's infectious. Just like positive energy is infectious, you know. Charisma is infectious. You know, what we put out is affects other people, not just ourselves. Okay. When will I be at Quattro Um, Sometime in January. Uh, I have no idea what the date is. 
Um, but um, you know, certainly look at my website and you'll and you'll see it all there. Um, those luncheon events are fun. It's not like the Richfield Playhouse. You know, it doesn't have all the things I do there. I will not be doing a reading. I'll probably just read a few people. Um, mostly, it's talking about the book, and you get to hang out and have lunch. And um, all the restaurants that I'm going to will have it on their websites. I will, and you don't respond to me, you respond to them. I'm not making any money from any of these things except to sell the book. And if any of you are authors, you know there's really not a lot of money to be made um, from a book. I just want the word out. That's what I want. So, um, but they're fun events. And the restaurants that I'm going to, I think, are fun too. So, I hope you can come, Megan. Um, you know, look, look at um, my website. Um, I think it's on there. Let's see. Okay, good book. Um, Marie is saying to us about um, stones and crystals. is called Love is in the Earth for Natural Stones and Crystals. So um, you can pick that up, and um, that would be a good thing for you to learn about crystals and, and, and stones. Um, Carrie is saying Crystals for Healing is another book, and Crystal Bibles. Oh, I think I have the Crystal Bible. Um, this is not not a Bible Bible. It's just um, it's just a book that um, talks about crystals and their properties and things like that. That's um, another book or another two books that Carrie's recommending. Um, you're very welcome, Kim. Hi, Tammy. It was nice to meet you today. Okay, everybody saying hi. Hi. Oh, the name. Oh, ghost. That's what ghost meant. <laughs> I'm a little slow on the uptake, okay? All I kept seeing is everybody posting Ghost. The name of the movie is Ghost. <laughs> so um, that's the movie I was talking about before um, when the bad guy is um, like this black kind of thing. Um, yeah, that. so that is true in that movie. Another good movie, and I can't think of the name of it, but you probably know what it is. Um, it was with Robin Williams. And um, the movie started out with kind of like not such a great premise. His wife dies, I think it's suicide. Um, and he, or somebody has suicide, somebody commits suicide, I don't know what, um, certainly someone dies. Um, and it's a view of heaven, okay? And the view of heaven um, in that movie is, um, is, is, is correct in a lot of ways. Not every way, but in a lot of ways. So um, whatever that movie is, um, I recommend that one too. It's a very kind of somber movie, but um, it may be something that... Um, if you're interested in that, you may want to, you may want to watch. Okay, so it looks like my first book is on Amazon. Um, how do you repel negative energy aimed directly at you? Well, if you walk with the armor of St. Michael around you and the armor of God, um, it will repel off of you. If you don't allow yourself to be taken over by the energy and you can walk away from it, that will also help. You know, if you're going to be in line with somebody who is directing negative energy at you, it's going to happen again and again and again and again until you don't give it um, any voice. You don't, you don't give it any power. Um, you don't feed the energy. You don't respond to the energy. You don't think about the energy. Keep in mind, there's so much going on in our energy fields that we don't know about. There's communication as well. So, you know, you may not say to the person, wow, you know, I really don't like your negativity, um, although you can say that, um, but, you know, or, or, or they're directing it at you, but instead you walk away from it. That speaks volumes, okay? But also protecting yourself, you know? Pray to God. Say, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this negative energy around me. Miracles happen every single day, and you may think, well, that would be a miracle. Okay, then claim your miracle. Claim it, you know? I've said over and over again, miracles are not just about walking on water. You know, miracles are about, you know, changing and feeling and that God is coming through to change something in your life and maybe dispelling the negative energy is a, is, is a miracle for you. So, you know, claim your miracle. Thank you, God, for this miracle that I don't have to feel this negative energy coming from this person anymore. Or thank you, God, that this person doesn't feel the need to dump this on me. Thank you, God, for sending your angels around me to protect me from all those who want me to be pulled down into their energy. You know, that's as simple as that. Mary repeats in my book over and over again to pray. That's a prayer. 
okay? Over and over again, pray, pray, pray. It's about connecting and recognizing that God is on our side. God wants to help us. God wants to help us. He created us and he wants to see us succeed. He wants to see us be happy. And so talk to him. Okay. Ah, so the name of the movie is, um, I have like no memory, okay? I love when people come in my office and I look at them and I think, I think I know this person. And they tell me, oh yeah, I was here last month. I have no memory. There's too much going on in me. But the name of the movie is What Dreams May Come. And that's the one with Robin Williams. Um, so, you know, you, you might, there's, there's some truth in that movie as well. Not complete truth. Um, but, you know, again, you know, there, there's some pieces of it, but it's a kind of, um, I don't know, it, it's not, it's not one of these, um, there is, there's happiness in the movie, but there's also a lot of sadness. So, you know, be prepared if you watch that. Okay. How can you help the negative energy from complaining? How can you help complainers to change their thought process? Even when we are, even when we ourselves, even when we complain. Well, the first thing you need to do is, you know, you gotta cut yourself a break. We all do. We're human beings, okay? Um, and there are things we complain about, okay? There are things that rile us up. It cannot become a focus. So, you know, I can complain that, um, you know, I, I don't like the work that um, the painter did in one of my rooms. And I can complain, and I can complain, and I can complain, or I can stop complaining and do something about it, okay? Or I can go to the painter and say, you know, I really would like you to fix this. Okay, so the complaint ends and it turns into a positive action. We can do that. Um, it's very hard to control what other people are doing and how other people are complaining. Um, if you're close enough to them, you can bring it to their attention. I bring it to people's attention all the time, all the time. When people are overly complaining, not just kind of, you know, venting, there's, there are complainers, okay? It's okay to say, oh, I really didn't like this, I wish it would have been better, oh, that's a complaint. Um, but then there are people who are hardcore complainers. And what I usually say to them is, instead of complaining, you should count your blessings. Because none of what you're complaining about is so horrific, but your blessings are pretty magnificent. So you can try saying that to people, but in the end, it's up to them to stop. Some people, you know, they like misery. There are people who like misery. They like to be miserable because they don't know what it feels like not to be miserable. So they're comfortable in that misery zone. They're comfortable in that unbalance in their energy fields. They're comfortable in it. You know, I would not be comfortable in it. I don't think you would be comfortable in it. But sometimes you just can't change them. Sometimes you just can't get them to the point where they recognize that um, this is not good for their health. And this is not good for the people around them. This is why they may be feeling isolated and lonely because they're going into a dark place. But you know, it depends how close you are to people to actually say it to them. Again, I do say it to people. So, but you know, I say a lot of things to people that other people wouldn't feel comfortable saying to people. But understand, if somebody wants to change, they will, um, they will respond in some way. They may say, I don't complain, you just think I complain, and then they'll go home and think, oh, I really do complain. They'll start thinking about it every time they're complaining. Okay, um, I don't see any other questions coming through here. Um, so if you do have another question, this would probably be a good time to answer, answer it before I sign off for the night. Um, I just wanna end with, um, a prayer that um, you um, can listen to these words and you know bring them into your life in some way to raise not only your energy but the energy of your family and your friends and the people around you because once we're in balance we can raise our vibration and we can walk more closely with those um, in the divine realm so um, so that's it I am signing off um, have a peaceful, wonderful night. Thank you.